Hey guys, welcome back to The Poor Investor. Today, we're gonna be going through something really unique on this channel that I haven't done in a really long time and I haven't seen anyone else do either. And hopefully that will intrigue your mind to think a little outside the box of crypto, but also include stocks. Why, why stocks all of a sudden? Well, not only because she is planning to go IPO and they have a stock and they have crypto and they're trying to mix the two worlds together. I actually was looking into something really unique. I was actually looking into something really unique. But before I go on, remember to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel. So stay with me on this one. All right, guys, I want to introduce this book. I actually have a, a whole bookshelf full of Warren Buffett books and how he analyzes stocks, balance sheets, how much debt they're in, and you know what's the forecast of these good companies that he puts his money in. Not that he doesn't make any mistakes, everyone makes mistakes, but there is a strategy to how you can make yourself profitable while doing this, right? So you're asking, poor investor, what the hell does this have to do with crypto? Well, you know, in the very early ages of my YouTube channel, I did talk a lot about stocks and I was looking at a lot of SPACs, I was looking at IPOs, you know, just a lot of things mixed in together and crypto just became a market of itself. Now, after spending some decent money on AMD cards and I was figuring out why Nvidia cards were so hard to get, is it the technology that's better? Are they producing better hash rates or do they just have a better branding? Which is it, right? So I started looking into their stocks and said, you know what, maybe it's time to see what the hell is going on with them since all these damn cards are always sold out. So here I have Nvidia's stock ticker and AMD's $296.67 as of this recording, which is December 23rd, AMD is at 146.51. Now every, all the information that I'm going to show you in a little bit from my balance sheet based on Warren Buffett's analyzing how he analyzes stocks is what i'm going to be using and demonstrating to you guys either one of these stocks or is a good buy or not or do you just continue buying their product and trying to mine crypto right i know that warren buffett tends not to look at the daily fud or the charts but check this out i mean are we at not at an all-time high bubble or are we not right look at this this is interesting the fact that all this happened within the one year as soon as COVID hit, this these two companies went off the, the chart and they look identical almost as, as far as how much they've gained in the uptrend, okay? I'm not saying equal in prices, but they're just the momentum of it. Everyone was home, everyone was bored out of their mind, everyone took up crypto. Crypto was like the hottest thing of 2020 and 2021, which is insane, right? Now they're saying Nvidia is overvalued, and also AMD is undervalued, but we, we can justify our own take on this. And they're saying like, you know, these are not short term. Now, mind you, AMD has been around for like over 50 years, just as long as Intel, actually one year below Intel, I believe AMD is 52 years old and Intel is 53. That's a pretty long time. Nvidia, on the other hand, is really young in comparison, 20 plus years old which is, I mean, it's, it's still a decent amount of time, but in comparison, they are like half the age almost. So let me show you guys my balance sheet and I'll come, I'll come back to the sticker. I'll come back to the ticker to explain that a little more. I want to make this video as, as smooth and easy, as understandable as possible. So I have this chart. I build this chart and you can see down here, I do it for a lot of different companies. I do it for Domino's, I do it for WWE, I do it for Disney so on and so forth. So I use this to analyze a lot of the stocks to put money into. I, I don't like to buy ETFs. I don't like just put my money into an IRA and let it sit there and hopefully get like two, 3% return in a year or something like that. I like to research on individual stocks. And this is the reason why I'm doing this. And all these numbers are public information and I have the entire chart. You can grab it from the tickers. I'll actually show you if you guys are actually interested, comment below and I'll show you step by step how I actually fill in these numbers. Now, there are some formulas here that analyzes what these percentage are. It's just the division of gross profit divided by the revenue, and we get 64%. So I put little reminders here, like anything above 40% is good. Anything above 20% is good, meaning gross margin is what they make gross. But after expenses, paying taxes, and whatever fees, and this and that, your net margin is what shows at the end of the day in their pocket 
as profit, not the gross. Anything I said above 20 is really good. And this is for Nvidia right now. And Nvidia does give a dividend to their shareholders. And then of course their balance sheet, I said 20% is very efficient, which is great because they need to balance what they spend and what they actually make and not exceeding that. Now, if they exceeded that, obviously the return on equity will be a lot lower. So if they're spending more than they actually make, then that's not a good thing because then, then they'll always be in debt. This was something really interesting that I found in 2021. This was basically in the crisis of all the exports or the supplies was like limited and there was nothing coming in. And I believe they had to actually spend more to get more in production or try to get their hands on these products uh, like the chips in order to produce more or they open up more factories. Of course, all the details of these numbers always relate back to a news article that reflected these changes and it progressed on to where it is today. So in 2021, obviously a lot of things happened in 2021 to show this price difference. Why is it above 20% and every other year before that was doing great. Now these are the dividend payouts to the, the shareholders. Now every ticker that I look at, at the very bottom, I always have intrinsic value calculator that I've put together that I've gotten from other resources, people who study Warren Buffett, people who study the stock market. Now these blue columns, it's a, it's a fixed value to put into the ticker to analyze what the intrinsic value of this stock would be, right? So these earning per share growth for five years, percentage wise, the current a triple A bond yield, all that information, you can just Google it, intrinsic value, right? So this is the value, the formula, that comes and analyzes this and becomes this, this value. Now it's saying it's worth $39 and four cents. Now let's just say historically, if someone was to analyze this with the intrinsic value, if you watch or listen to or read Benjamin Graham, the intelligent investor or Warren Buffett, they would not touch this company. It's, it's too, too hot. And plus one, the other thing is that it's technology, right? So Warren Buffett doesn't touch much technology besides Apple, I think. But then of course the other companies that he does invest in like Coca-Cola, McDonald's, and if he does invest in those, they invest in technology. You, you see the, you see the connection. So we're looking at the intrinsic value of $39 and four cents. And the current price is $297. Now this is pulling right from Google finance. It's feeding the ticker price into the spreadsheet now. And then I have it as a sell because it just doesn't make sense. If the current price is more than what the intrinsic value is, you're overpaying for this thing and your upside is 86% in a negative. So that's why I wouldn't put so much money into the Nvidia stock itself. And this is the reason why this is telling me not to do so. Now, will, would Nvidia ever drop back down to the intrinsic value? Of course not. It may not even ever happen. Now, is this the type of company that you can grow with and make tons and tons of money? That really all depends on relative to how much you're putting in and when you put it in. You could put it in now, right? At the, the peak, at the height of its, its existence, $297. And you saw the chart. I'm going to pull back up the chart. So here's the chart. Now, if you go into the max, would you invest in any company at the all time high? There's a lot of potential for it to come back down. Not so much that it'll keep on going up. We know this. We know this from all crypto that we invested in. We know this from any stock that we have invested in historically. This just isn't realistic. Now that's the, that's the kind of risk you would be taking if you put your money into Nvidia. So let's take a quick look at AMD really quick. So AMD currently is at $146.96 as of this recording. And it does say that it's undervalued. Let's just go and see why is it considered undervalued from my perspective, from my balance sheet that I put together here. So let's go right here, AMD. Off the bat, AMD does not offer any type of dividend payback to their stock shareholders. Right now, AMD has been doing ridiculously well in the last three, four months, all right? Trailing 12 months is currently 2021 and it hasn't ended yet. And then 2017, each one of these in the gross percentage wise, it's been doing okay. Now in the last two years, uh, 2021, I'll consider 2021 one year and 2020 another year, they're both above 20%, meaning they're in the positive. But prior years to that, before pandemic, 
I'm not sure what happened or they're just not competing very well with Nvidia because they were their challengers. I don't know what the purchase amount as far as how many people are actually buying their products, right? AMD is just not video cards. They had the processors and they've been around for the last 52 or three years, 52 years. So what's going on with that, right? So, the, but we look at the total, they're at 12.66%, 12.66%. Nvidia on the other hand is 30.42%. So right off the bat, Nvidia is definitely doing better on the income statement. Now their balance sheet, now the balance sheet is average from the last four years is doing okay. We haven't averaged in the, the fifth year, which is the 2021 because it hasn't finished yet. So it wouldn't be really a true number. So the true numbers right now is 22%. It is efficient. So they are debt to uh, income ratio is okay. Uh, Nvidia at the same time is doing more than okay. They're at 33.42%. You know, I'm going back and forth, but I just want to make certain things clear to you guys. Cash flow. Now look at this. Why is it in 2020, AMD's cash flow was doing better than Nvidia. Remember, Nvidia last year was doing horrible. Well, I mean, this is 2021. Every company, and when you look up their information, is a little different compared to each other. They're not going to be identical when because everyone has their columns laid out differently. Their accountants do things differently and publish it on, you know, let's just say Yahoo or Google Finance. It's not going to be identical row for row. So let's go back to AMD right now. Now, I already said, I'm not going to come back to, to Nvidia as much. I already said Nvidia is not something I would invest in. Although it looks attractive, I would not put my money in there. Now, let's look at AMD really quick. So they were up on 2020, but all these years, look at this. They're at 63%. Now, I said less the better. This, this is in the 60 percentile of their net income compared to the how much they've been spending, which is insane, right? So they're definitely uh, not as attractive as the Nvidia. So we don't, I don't know what's going on with AMD. I'm not looking at the news. I'm not looking at the charts. I'm just looking at the straight numbers year by year. Okay. I don't know what kind of lawsuits they had. I don't know what kind of damage controls they had, or they went through some natural disasters with their factories or, or protest or union strikes whatever it is i don't know I, I just it's i'm oblivious to all that information but i'm just focused on the numbers like i said earlier i always have a ticker at the bottom i always have a chart at the bottom for the intrinsic value now amd currently the earning per share is 3.24 and these blue charts these blue cells are fixated in there okay this is based on you can modify those numbers and i uh, i can go into the details of how that affects this intrinsic value but if you were to really put your money into something like this you would take that intrinsic value and you would consider it as the price that the company is worth not where it is now all right so intrinsic value the comp is worth $38.82 the current price is 146 and 75 cents now of course this is considered a sell if you own this stock when it was actually at the price of where it was when you bought it like let's just say $38 $35 two three years ago and it's at this current high all-time high this is the time that you would sell and your upside would be ridiculously high now if you were to buy it now it's not worth that much it hasn't caught up to be worth that much right now so that's why I would not invest in either one of these companies as a stock, I mean, you can buy it as a long-term hold, but definitely not a short-term or mid-term hold because I think there's still a lot of uh, uncertainties with these chip makers and also this whole GPU, you know, retail portion of it. I, I know a lot of these Nvidia cards and, and AMD cards are overpriced right now, not just from scalpers but from manufacturer msrp even the retailers are selling it like 20 30 percent above the msrp which is insane right i would not put too much money personally into the stock itself but of course you know you see me buying the actual products and I, i'll use it but these upsides are just a little too dangerous in my opinion to put more money and every day it's going up every day is going up but there's a lot of potential for it to also come back down. And when it does, that's the time when you actually would consider putting some extra money if you have into a stock like this and hold it for the long term. All right. 
I want to thank you guys for being here, and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.